Good morning. This is Sunday, August the 7th, 2022. It's an online Sunday school lesson for Aceville Baptist Church out of Anderson, South Carolina. Of course, this is Johnny Smith with the lesson today. <clears throat> the title of this week's lesson is God Honors. Uh, the explanation given to me from the commentary says, God honors people who demonstrate God's priorities in their lives. The commentary also had an introductory thought that I thought was just excellent to get us started for today. God always knows the ones who faithfully serve him, and he, will, he remembers those who faithfully observe him, and he will faithfully stand behind us. As you know, we've been studying First and Second Kings over the last couple months. Last week, we left off in 2 Kings chapter 7, where God provided for the Israelites by sending army noises to the enemy who had surrounded them during a seven-year famine. When the enemy heard the noises, uh, they began to run, leaving their camps, including their food, behind, uh, which the Israelites were able to overcome the famine by taking these enemy provisions that God had provided. At that time, the king of Israel was King Jehoram. <clears throat> the teacher's book said this, and this it leads us into this week's lesson. From the time of King Jehoram in Israel to our story today in chapter 12, there were many kings in Israel and in Judah and also in the neighboring country of Syria or Aram back then in Bible times. There were also changing of the prophets. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. It was by such experiences, even during evil kings' times, that God was repeatedly drawing the children of Israel and Judah back to, their, back to faith and obedience to Him being the true God. For many years, they continued to worship idols and received the sad consequences. This in our story today, continues. Let me share with you. Uh, to share with you today, I'm going to ask you to get your Bibles out. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you forward from chapter 7, uh, and give you a quick summary to get us over to chapter 12, which is where our lesson is at today. But to understand what happens in chapter 12, we need to understand what happened before then. So turn with me to chapter 7, verse 15. <clears throat> Second Kings chapter 7 verse 15 And they went after them to the Jordan and indeed all the road was full of garments and weapons which the Syrians had thrown away in their haste so the messengers returned and told the king then the people went out and plundered the tents of the Syrians so as say a fine flour was sold for a shekel and two says of barley for a shekel, according to the word of the Lord. Now the king had appointed the officer on whose hand he leaned to have charge of the gate. But the people tramped him down at the gate, and he died. Just as the man of God had said, who spoke when the king came down to him. <clears throat> as you remember back last week, uh, King Benadad was over Syria. Elisha was a prophet of God, and he was staying in and around the king of, of Israel, which was the northern part of, uh, of Israel, and he was staying around Samaria. So Elisha was the prophet of God. Then in uh, this, these verses, we find that Joram, or Jehoram, uh, Joram was the son of Ahab, king of Israel. He died after reigning for 12 years, and he was evil in the sight of the Lord. Jehoram started uh, then as king of Judah. He did evil. Then in 725. Wait a minute. Did you get that right? That would be 825. Chapter 8, verse 25. In the twelfth year of Jeram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, Ahaziah, the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, began to reign. 
So we see here that another king takes over. The, the son of Jehoram, Ahaziah, started reign in Judah. He reigned one year, and the Bible says he did evil. Then turn with me to chapter 9, verse 3. Then take the flask of oil and pour it on his head and say, Thus saith the Lord, I have appointed you king over Israel. Then open the door and flee, and do not delay. Delay. So the young man, the servant of the Lord, prophet, went to Ramoth Gideon. And when he arrived there, the captains of the army sitting and said, I have a message for you, commander. Jehu said, For which one of us? And he said, For you, commander. Then he arose and went into the house, and he poured the oil on his head and said to him, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I have anointed you king over the people of the Lord, over Israel. So then we see where Jehu, king of Israel, uh, died evil. Then we turn to chapter 10, verse 11. So Jehu killed all who remained of the house of Ahab in Jezreel, and all his great men and his close acquaintances and his priests, until he left him none remaining. Jehu killed all the house of Ahab because of their illness. He gathered all the Baal worshippers and slaughtered them. The sad thing is that he also followed in their footsteps. And according to the Bible, he worshipped idols and did evil in the sight of the Lord. Toward the end of Jehu's life, the Lord allowed Israel and Judah's size to be reduced because of their Ill evilness. And they were reduced by invasions of foreign countries. Then in 2 Kings chapter 10, verses 32 through 36. And this is the death of Jehu. In those days, the Lord began to cut off parts of Israel. And Hazael conquered, remember Hazael took over Syria. Hazael conquered them in all the territory of Israel. From the Jordan eastward and the land of Gilead, Gad, Reuben, and Manasseh. From Aurora, which is by the river Arnon, including Gilead and Bashan. Now the rest of the acts of Jehu, all that he did and all his might, are they not written in the book of Chronicles of the kings of Israel? So Jehu rested with his fathers, and he buried him in Samaria. Then Jehoahaz, his son, reigned in his place. And the period that Jehu reigned over Israel and Samaria was 28 years. So we're moving up now to a new king in Israel. So Jehu died, and Jehoahaz, his son, reigned in Israel in his place. Now turn with me to chapter 11, verses 1, 2, 3. When Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the royal heirs. But Jehosheba, the daughter of King Joram, sister of Ahaziah, took Joash, Joash, you can say Joash or Jehoash, uh, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him away from among the king's sons who were being murdered. And they told him and his nurse in the bedroom for Matthias so that he was not killed. So he was hidden with her in the house of the Lord for six years while Athaliah reigned over the land. When all the killings were going on, Jehoshaphat, daughter of King Jeram, took Joash as a baby now and hid him to keep him from being murdered with the rest of the royal family in the house of the Lord. During this time, all his brothers and sisters and entire family were being killed and murdered. He was hid in the house of the Lord. Well, now turn with me to 2 Kings chapter 11, verse 21. We're going to get to chapter 12 here in just a minute. Jehoash was seven years old when he became king. We finally got there. God, get this. This boy who was named Jehoash, who had been hid and kept in the Lord's house for seven years, and when he was seven years old, became king. I guess by living there seven years, he got to know the place pretty well. 
He grew up there. He saw how the temple was getting old. And even at his early age, he saw that the temple of God needed repair. Thus begins our lesson for today. Chapter 12, verses 1, 2, and 3. Let me read that for you. In the seventh year of Jehu, Jehoash became king, and he reigned 40 years in Jerusalem. This is in Judah, the southern part of the kingdom. His mother's name was Zibiah of Beersheba. Jehoash did what was right in the sight of the Lord. That's very important. All the days in which Jehoiada, the priest, instructed him. But the high places were not taken away. The people still sacrificed and burned incense on the high places. Jehoash, which was being hid in the temple, now takes over. He's seven years old. Now we get to this lesson. It's, it, it, it's an unusual lesson, but it's also an unusual story. But it also has a lot of meaning to it. So turn with me to chapter 12, verses 4 and 5. Now the teacher's book entitled this section of the lesson, A Recognized Problem. Now don't forget this Joahash is king now. And Jehoash said to the priest, All the money of the dedicated things that is brought into the house of the Lord, even the money of everyone that passeth the account, the money that every man is set at, and all the money that cometh into any man's heart to bring into the house of the Lord. Let the priest take it to them, every man of his acquaintance, and let them repair the breaches of the house, wheresoever any breach shall be found. King Jehoi, seven years old, been living there all his life, said to the priest at the temple, the temple needs repairing. As I was studying this week, I said, well, he'd lived there seven years. He surely knew the place. And he would, had been there through the rains and through the drought, and through the heat, through the cold. And he knew what needed to be done, even though he was seven years old. Uh, as I was reading that, uh, I, had to, I had to make a note here to share this with you. Uh, a few weeks ago, I had to ride down to Atlanta, me and the wife. So I took my granddaughter with me. So we were riding down the Interstate 85 to Atlanta, and then we got down there, did what we were going to do, and returned home. As we headed back, we crossed the Georgia-South Carolina line, and my granddaughter, at her early age, immediately says to me, well, it looks like Georgia takes care of their roads. As soon as we entered South Carolina, there were potholes right on the state line on the South Carolina side. Even at her young age, she noticed that South Carolina was not taking care of its roads. It's uncanny sometimes what younger folks can notice and what they can say. After noticing the need for repairs for seven years, seven-year-old King Jehoash said to the priest, Jehoiada, Jehoiada at the temple. He was the priest at the temple. The temple needs fixing. It needs repairs. So he gave a command to the priest. The temple must, must be a place of worship, and it must be a place that truly honors God. He gave the priest orders then to oversee and start the repairs. The king then further explained that the funding for the repairs would come from the money taken in at the temple from different sources. Now, I want you to understand this. The king's quote was, use the money brought in at the temple for dedicated things. He then further explains to the priests about the money for dedicated things. There were three types of money he talked about. One, the money of everyone that passeth the count. This was an old requirement found in Exodus chapter 30, where every person that came to the temple was required to bring a half a shekel with them to put into the, to the donations. Uh, if you remember in Bible times, one shekel was generally about the wages for one day of work. Uh, the second type of money was the money that every man is set at. This is the money that those folks who had felt blessed by the Lord 
would give to express their thanks to the Lord for his blessings on them. These were blessings you had. The more you seemed to be blessed, the more you felt like you needed to give. The third type of money was the money that cometh into a man's heart to bring to the temple. This is the money a person would bring because they felt God prompted them to do so. The king told the priest he was to determine the silver coins given to the temple as dedicated money or as volunteer money. And all this money was to go to the repairs and that should be plenty to repair the temple on an ongoing basis. He wanted the temple repaired and he wanted it stayed repaired. The priest was then charged to the people who did the work to re get the rep uh, repairs done to the temple. Uh, I, I wrote down here an example. Just as our church would pay a person to do repairs or construction or repair constructions on our church. Uh, we generally call this in our church our building fund. Now turn with me to 2 Kings chapter 12, verses 6, 7, 8. And I've entitled this section of the lesson, Uh-oh. So turn with me to uh, 2 Kings chapter 12, verses 6, 7, 8. But it was so that in the three and twentieth year of King Joash, the priest had not repaired the breaches of the temple. Then King Jehoash called for Jehoiada, the priest, and the other priests, and said unto them, Why repair ye not the breaches of the temple? Now therefore receive no more money of your acquaintance, but deliver it for the breaches of the house. And the priest consented to receive no more money of the people, neither to repair the breaches of the house. In the 23rd year, so from the time he was seven to the time he was 23, in other words, about 16 years, the priests were taking in the money, and the scripture says they had done nothing. In the 23rd year reign of his year of his reign, now 30 years old, King Jehoash noted had completed no repairs on the temple. So the king was upset. The priests had failed to complete the repairs. And the Lord's house continued to display damage. King Jehoash called for a meeting with Jehoda and all the other priests at the temple. I got a note I want to share with you from the teacher's book. I read both the commentary and the teacher's book this week. It said, remember Jehoiada, the priest had raised Jehoash for seven years in the temple as a child. They knew each other well. So now the king is taking some of their rights or privileges away from him. So King Jehoash asked the priest, why repair ye not the breaches of the temple? You have the money to do it. Presumably the priest had no good answers at this time. Je King Jehoash then came up with a new plan. Receive no more money of your own acquaintance. He took the duties of repairing to the temple from the priest and gave it to someone else. Note verse 8 says the priest also agreed to the new plan. So turn with me to 2 Kings chapter 12 verses 9 through 14 and I've entitled this the new plan. But, Jeho but King Jeho Ho but the priest, let me start over. But Jehoiada, the priest, took a chest and bored a hole in the lid of it and set it beside the altar on the right side as one cometh into the house of the Lord. And the priest that kept the door put therein all the money that was brought into the house of the Lord. And it was so. When they saw that there was much money in the chest, that the king's scribe and the high priest came in and they put up in bags and told the money that was found in the house of the Lord. And they gave the money being told into the hands of them that did the work, that had the oversight of the house of the Lord. And they laid it out to the carpenters and the builders that wrought upon the house of the Lord and to masons and hewers of stone and to buy timber and huge stone to repair the breaches of the house of the Lord and for all that was laid out for the house to repair it. Howbeit there were not made for the house of the Lord bowls of silver, snuffers, basins, trumpets, 
any vessel of gold or vessel of silver or of the money that was brought into the house of the Lord, but they gave to the workmen and repaired therewith the house of the Lord. Following his discussion with the priest, Jehoiada, King Joahash instituted a new system in the temple. He cre created a designated offering box, chest, that would collect the money people gave to the, for the repairs. And from this chest, all the money would go to the workers for repairs. He had the priest take a chest and bore a hole in the lid and put, the t put it in the temple right next to the altar on the right side. Now, I was able to find one picture. Uh, it's, a, it's a rendering, uh, but you can also see here uh, where they enter into the temple, he put the chest right here, and you can see this gentleman dropping his coins in the temple before they could go in. And he put two gatekeepers there to make sure everybody that went in left their money in the chest. So you couldn't fail to, to remember uh, to give. The box would be supervised by the priest that kept the door to the temple. When the priest noticed much money in the chest, then the king's scribe and the high priest would come, take all the money, and put it in bags. Having the high priest and the king's scribe set up a system of checks and balances for no theft. Once they gathered the funds, priest Jehoiada and king's scribes would then give the payments directly to the workers for the repairs. The scripture mentions four kinds of workers. Carpenters those that repaired wood, the wooden parts of the temple. Builders, the general contract, con construction workers who worked on walls and the roof and other areas of repair. The masons, those were craftsmen who worked with the bricks and the stones. Hewers of stone, those that took large stones and large bricks and shaped them to fit exactly in the, place, in the places that needed repairs. The king also set up with the supervisors to buy new timber and stone. All these plans, King Jehoash, at age 30, set up to get the Lord's te temple repaired so it would honor God. As we begin to close now, God expects his people, nowadays our church, to take care of the finances in order to take care of our church building. God challenges us to use our earthly blessings to invest in his house, which leads to eternal blessings. People who sacrifice generously to God's work can find themselves never outgiving God. For you see, God honors those who give to God and who also give to God-led activities. Never cheat on what you are to give God. My grandmother, who was a Pentecostal lady, always told me, you may think you can cheat God out of his tithes and offerings, but God will get it one way or another. Now turn with me to our closing section, 2 Kings chapter 12, verses 15 and 16. Moreover, they reckoned not with the men into whose hands they delivered the money to be bestowed on workmen, for they dealt faithfully. The trespass money and sin money was not brought into the house of the Lord. It was the priest. You may ask, with this new plan by King Jehoash, how were the priests to be taken care of? How did the priests get what they needed? Verse 15 and 16 mentions two other types of money or sacrifices that was brought to the temple. Remember, this is Old Testament days. The priests still did sacrifices for the people. Verse 16 mentions two other types of money. One, the trespass money. If a person caused his fellow man to stumble or touches anything considered unclean, he was required to bring a sacrifice. Again, this could, consider, uh, could, could be a bull, a goat, or a lamb if they did have little money or it would actually have been an offering of silver or gold. This was the trespass money. The priest would sacrifice some of it and keep the rest of it for him and his family. Or the other one was the sin money. 
If anyone sinned unintentionally and finally understood he had sinned, he was required to bring a sacrifice to the priest. The priest should, again, this sacrifice could be a bull, goat, or lamb, or silver or gold. The priest would sacrifice certain parts of it and was allowed to keep the rest of it for himself. The priest kept the portion of the sacrifices and offerings to which they were entitled, and the temple repair was funded by the designated funds through designated offerings. You, like me, may ask a question. What happened to T King Joash? Well, he reigned for 40 years total. Then 2 Kings chapter 12, verses 19 and 20. Now the rest of the acts of King Joash and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? And his servants arose and formed a conspiracy and killed Joash in the house of Milo, which goes down to Zillah. For Zo Josachar, the son of Shemeth, and Jehozabad, the son of Shomar, his servants struck him. So he died, and they buried him with his fathers in the city of David. Then Amaziah, his son, reigned in his place. We move on with more kings. His life ended in an evil way, even though he tried to honor God during his life. The commentary closed this story today out with this way. It said, A believer's integrity in life, in his community, and in his church can further the cause of God's kingdom or not. Because we bear the name Christians, people watch us closely to see if we live like Christians or live like Christ. Unsafe people often watch Christians and their attitudes toward others to see if Christ in their life. Today, I'm going to ask you three questions as we close. Is your life honoring God? Is your offerings honoring God? Is your tithes honoring God? If the Lord is being honored with these, I in turn, like you, can ask God to honor us and give us lives where he will be honored in our lives. Today, as I close, I want to take a few moments uh, let me ask you today to pray for Brother Mark. We pray that he will soon be able to get his kidney transplant. We're praying for little Emily and the family that they will soon find out uh, exactly what needs to be done. Lord, we're praying for the Walters family. Uh, it, it, do, uh, it doesn't happen. It happens every day that I have to stop and pray for Preacher Harold in the memory of Ms. Jan. Pray for the Shore family. What a beautiful service last Sunday. Uh, and I'm going to ask also a little personal request today. Pray for the Buchanan family. Uh, this is a family, the boys uh, and uh, were involved in the scouting, and I've been watching these boys go up. Uh, they've been around me for all their lives, uh, but they lost their father this week. I attended the funeral, but... Uh, I promised them I would pray for them, and today I'm praying for the Buchanan family. Pray also today for those uh, who are affected by COVID again. It seems like it's coming back around. As most of you know, I just attended uh, a convention uh, in Tennessee, uh, and I just got a report back four days later after I returned home that there's a few folks that returned back from the convention, from the conference, and had tested positive. We also still have a few in our church that are tested positive. We pray, to pray right now for all those. Father, we thank you today for another Sunday school lesson, another opportunity to teach your lesson and understand your words. Lord, there's a lot of kings in Israel and Judah's and Syria's time that affected our history and affected the Old Testament. But Lord, we read how they were so evil. We pray right now, Lord, that our lives personally will honor you that we will be able to honor you in such a way that other people will see you in our lives. We pray for those that are sick, those that need a special blessing, those that need comfort right now, Lord, we're praying for those. We're praying for these families that's lost loved ones as we promised we would do. And Lord, we're praying right now today that somehow, Lord, you would uh, be able to overcome this disease called COVID that affects us and it seems like it just keeps coming back and back, Lord. 
We pray that you'll forgive us of our sins. First in Christ's name we do pray. And we'll see you next week. Amen.